Welcome back to another Encode Venter tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to continue the videos that I've, or the video that I have been doing, um, basically working on how to write LAMPS data files uh, using external software. In this case, we're going to continue with the Python scripting that I started in the last video. So, last time we wrote something that would spit out some uh, random atom positions, essentially. And in this one, I'm actually going to turn this into a crystalline um, material. So we're just going to we're going to write a metal first. So what we're going to do in this video, you could actually do easier in lamps with its native tools, uh, but the the function the flexibility that we'll build in will give us a lot more control, um, as we'll see later. So. Um, Without any further delay, then, let's just get started. So I have pulled up here the script from last time, and I'm going to save a copy of this, and then we'll modify it to, to do this new thing. So um, most of this is actually going to be the same. We, well, all of this part is going to be the same. You write the, write the atoms the same way. So we'll just modify a few things here and there. Um, the first of all, when you're doing this crystalline material, we're going to define a system similar as we did before, but we're not going to be able to determine beforehand how many atoms are in there. So we'll actually just erase those two lines, and we'll just continue from here. So um, let's actually let's define a atomic system to use. So we're actually going to use a aluminum FCC system. So we're going to define a lattice parameter. I'll just write a comma here. So a lattice parameter will determine how big our crystal um, structure is essentially. And so for aluminum it has a lattice parameter of uh, 4.046 angstrom. So we'll just put that in there. We'll say just a note for us that this is aluminum. We also need the FCC basis. Um, let's use the cubic uh, FCC basis for this one. In other words, our basis is just the simple cubic um, structure. So in other words, what I mean is all we'll have for the basis is just the one, the X, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So we'll say 100010 zero, 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 one, zero, and 0, zero, 001, like that. All right, so that gives us our actual basis well, the first part of it. We also need to scale this by the lattice parameter. Um, now, when you create a cubic basis for an FCC structure, you actually have four atoms in that basis. So we'll also put in here something for each of those atoms. So for that basis, you'll have an atom sitting at the origin and you'll have an atom sitting at each of the near side faces of your cube essentially. So it's sitting at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, so they're on the xy plane, and then you'll have it on the xz plane, and you'll have one on the yz plane. And we'll also scale that by the lattice parameter. OK, so there, there's our basis. Um, now we're actually going to define our system a little bit differently here now. Uh, right now, we've said that it's in angstroms. Uh, we're actually going to do it a little bit differently, I think, because we're just going to want to iterate through our, our basis, essentially. Uh, checking these atom positions and making sure they're in our cell. 
well, we're not even going to check them. We we just want to we just want to generate some atom positions. So let's just say this is actually in lattice units. So and then we'll say sure twenty. So it'll it'll basically do twenty atoms along a side in each direction. So it'll be twenty atoms on one side, twenty atoms on the other side. You know, twenty by twenty by twenty. All right, so that'll do that. Um, now we're not obviously going to generate them randomly this time, so we'll take that out, and we will take that out. All right. Instead, we're going to iterate through the system size. So, in other words, we'll go from zero to nineteen. Uh, in each direction so that we create 20 different cells. But we need to do that, like I said, in each direction. So we'll say for i in the range, and we'll say for j in the range for the y direction, and we'll say for k in the z direction. So that gives us the base position of our uh, of our individual cubes for these this lattice structure in other words so we can we can actually create a base uh, position just by saying it's i j k so that'll, that'll give us our base position um, but that won't be in terms of our actual basis that's you could think of this as in the cell basis, or in the lattice basis, I guess, really, because you're an integer number of basis vectors in each direction. So we could turn this into the actual Cartesian um, position by multiplying it by the actual basis. So this is basi basically, it's transforming it from the uh, the basis basis, which I by which I mean like the atomic basis basis into the Cartesian uh, basis. So if that sounded confusing, don't worry about it. But basically, just know that we're turning our integers into a Cartesian point instead of just this integer point. It'll be something like that. But this is just like the you can think of this as just the origin of our cube. So we're putting all these different cubes in a 3D array, but this is just the origin of our cube. In each of our cubes, we have four atoms. So we need to iterate through all these atoms and create each, each one of them. Oops, there we go. So we'll take the Cartesian position, and then we'll add the atom position. So for each of these atoms and our base atoms, it'll add that offset. So we'll have a 0, 0, 0 because we have one at the origin, and then it'll add each of these atoms on the faces. And that, I think, should create our crystal structure. So let's rename this, and we'll say that and another thing we do have to change down here is we don't have n atoms anymore so instead we'll look at the length of our positions vector um, and then that actually isn't right either say system size times lattice parameter because system size now is just this integer in terms of the lattice units so we have to convert that to actual distance units. All right. And with that, I think we're done. Let's let's try it out and see how it does. It runs. So that's a good sign. Um, I'm going to open it up here in Oviedo, and we'll try it out. There you go. So you noticed here in Oviedo, I added a, a polyhedral template matching modifier so that I could check the 
structure of it and it looks like it is definitely FCC structure you can see it's all 100% FCC structure so that's good that's what we expected so in this video we went through a very simple um, use of Python to make a crystalline material what we can do with this in the future is actually rotate this crystal in any orientation that we want, which is something that LAMPS actually has a quite a bit more trouble with. The other thing is we can create much more complicated geometries um, and couple that. You know, we can do much more complicated geometries, like for some kind of grain structure, and we can make all each of those grains in whatever orientation we want. So we could much more accurately represent uh, different grain structures if we wanted. So anyway, I hope this short video is helpful. Um, I hope to see you again in the next one. And until then, leave some comments or uh, suggestions in the, in the comments section below. Thanks.